Σε μια πολύ ψηλή κορφή πρέπει να φτάσω Γι' αυτά πλώνω ξανά πολύ ψηλά τα δυο μου τέλεια Για να κλέψω λίγο φως από τα λάβερα αστέρια Δεν αντέχω εδώ κάτω και κοντεύει να με πρίξει Των ανθρώπων η μιζέρια τόσο όσο και κρύψει Δεν αντέχω άλλο κι όλοι αυτοί δεν μου ταιριάξαν Πήρα τ' άλλο μονοπάτι και όχι αυτό που μου χαράξαν Ήταν δύσβατο σκληρό και με παγίδες πολλές Αγάπες κάρτες και φίλοι φαρμάκερες οκές Είχε τέρατα με παράξενε στολέ που παράμονευαν πάντοτε κρυφά με στι σκιέ. Μην κοντοσταθεί, θα πρόκειται να ακολουθήσει. Τα βόδια σπίξε γερά και μη δακρύσει. Εγώ το φύγα και το έφτασα στο τέρμα. Και όπω γράφουν στα βιβλία, οι παλιοί σοφοί όταν θα φτάσει. Ο ήλιο στο τελευταίο γέρμα θα βάλουνε φωτιά από ψηλά. Η αετή για σου με πρόδωσαν με πίσω μαχαιριέ. Θέλω να ξέρουν ότι σιγάνει κάποιου και για αυτέ τι αγάπε τι παλιέ. Θέλω να ξέρουν ότι. Κι όσοι μ' αφήνισαν με πύρινα δες μ' αφαιρώ να ξέρουν ότι Σιγάνι φοβηθώ Να έρθουνε να με βρουν στην κορυφή ψηλά τους περιμένω και Σιγάνι φοβηθώ Μου είπα να μην κάνω όνειρα τρελά Να μην τολμήσω να κοιτάξω τα αστέρια Μα εγώ ποτέ μου δεν τους πήρα σοβαρά Πήρα τον κόσμο ολοκληρό στα δυο μου χέρια Θέλουνε τώρα να μου φτιάξουν μια φοριά Που έχει πάνω της το φόβο την ασκήμια Και ένα κλάμα γοερό και μια λυσίδα βαριά Κουβαλάει την κατάρα των θεών και την πλαστήμια Δεν θα δακρύσω μα δεν και θα φοβηθώ Δεν θα αφήσω να μου κλέψουν τα μοιρά μου ελευθερά ψηλά Πολύ ψηλά πετώ Κι όλοι ζηλεύουν τα περίπανα κι αδές με τα φτερά μου Και περιμένω κι άλλα δέρφια για να βγουν Σ' αυτή την κόρυφη που όλους περιμένει αρχή Να μην τα κλείσουν και να μην φοβηθούν Σ' αυτήν την έξυπνη απάτη την καλωστημένη Για σους με πρόδωσαν με πίσω μαχαιριές Θέλω να ξέρουν ότι Σιγάνι κάποιου Και για αυτές τις αγάπες τις παλιές Θέλω να ξέρουν ότι Σιγάνι κάποιου Κι όσοι μ' αφήνισαν με πύρι να δες Μα θέλω να ξέρουν ότι Σιγάνι φοβηθώ Να φτούνε να με βρουν στην κόρυφη ψηρά Τους περιμένω και για σους με πρόδωσαν με πίσω μαχαιριές θέλω να ξέρουν ότι Σιγάνι κάποιου και για αυτές τις αγάπες τις παλιές θέλω να ξέρουν ότι Σιγάνι κάποιου και όσοι μ' αφήνισαν με πήρει να δες μα θέλω να ξέρουν ότι Σιγάνι φοβηθώ να φτούνε να με βρουν στην κόρυφη ψηλά τους περιμένω και Narcissism, a personality disorder where you have abnormal desire for oneself, where you lack empathy, and unconscious inadequacy of self-esteem, due to regression of child development. Also a delusion that you are more important than everyone else. Narcissism, narcissistic people are not self-centered. There is a difference. Narcissism, N-A-R-C-I-S-S-I-S-M, Narcissism. <laughs> Why hello, I'm Super Narc coming to you from my intergalactic mental headquarters. You infidels, been wanting to know the ins and outs of Super Narc. So I thought, I would reveal my secret powers to the world. I have the power to make you care, then destroy your life in a flash. I can cripple a soul in a few seconds. I can flush away all traces of my evil deeds. And lie to your face, and blame you for everything. I have the power for never being at fault.
When I'm accused of something I can use my superpowers to transfer the blame to another. I can mirror your behavior and see through your armor. I can erase all hopes and dreams from your life. I can lie to the police with a smile on my face or tear in my eye. I can make you wish you never met me. I can take your worst nightmares and use them. I can stick my straw in you and suck away all your life force like a Capri Sun fruit drink and toss you away like one too. I have the power to never feel sorry or show you any support. I will play dumb in front of you and insult your intelligence while laughing the entire time. You fall for my scams. I have the power to have intercourse, with no desire, lust, passion, or any emotion whatsoever, for I'm super narc. Did I hurt your feelings? Well don't bother me with it. As I have no understanding for your cause. I can punch you hit you yell at you bite you slap you run your life with my super great powers. I am not from your planet. I am from the planet narc. Where all we narcs, live miserable, unfortunate victim lives. I was sent to Earth to destroy all hope for life, and to rip apart your sense of self-worth. I can leave you in despair, and never care, ha ha for I'm super narc. I don't have sympathy, cause I am too busy not listening to my super hearing, and ironing my cape. I come across as spoiled but there's more. I don't quit. I go until you beg, and I give you the final blow. I wear masks to lie to everybody. I have no conscience for right and wrong. I do not really even have time to do this interview. But I thought you infidels needed a reminder of who's in control. Do not approach me on my behavior, as I will remind you why you need me. And make you feel like life cannot exist for you without me. Try leaving me and I will hunt you down and stalk you like you only seen on crime television shows. I will use the relationship as a weapon, I have the power, to cry at will. In short I have powers to con, deceive and manipulate, always saying it is your fault. Do not try and take away the attention you give me, or you will be sorry. No matter what you do I will always know someone who can do it better than you. I can use my powers of put downs and abuse to make you feel two feet tall. And all while, I want to give you a hug and suck the life force right out of you. Do not try to make me see reason. If you don't wish to be destroyed, by my venom dripping tongue and laser beam eyes, bye for now. share with you how a narcissist catches his or her victims. I'm sure you'd be interested in this topic since many of you are in a relationship, either short-term, long-term, married, dating, etc. And so the first point that I want to share with you on how a narcissist catches his or her victims is that, first of all, the narcissist is full of charm. He will charm you to death. He is the most amazing person, he or she. And what they'll do is they'll tell you what you want to hear. Everything that you want to hear, they'll tell you that. They study you, they analyze you, and they do the things that you just go crazy over and that you want to experience. And so they know that, and so they feed that back to you. Another thing is that the extreme narcissist does is that he or she will promise you the moon. And you'll say, oh my God, this is amazing. He is giving me the moon. Well, before you get extraterrestrial on me, listen to the rest of what I'm going to say to you, okay? Now, you have desires. You and I have desires. We all have desires. We want to be appreciated. We want to be loved. We want to be uh, held, you know, uh, thanked, praised, valued. And so the narcissist knows this. And so to catch you, the narcissist will say and he will appreciate you and he will appeal to your deepest desires and yearnings. Narc the narcissists are not dumb people. They're very, very intelligent. They've studied human nature for a long time and they learn over a long period of time how to manipulate people. Another thing is that the narcissist will stir your emotion inside of you. All the good emotions you feel, he'll turn them on. He knows how to find the switch that turns those good emotions on. So you have to watch out for this because 
you start falling for this narcissist, he will be turning on all those good, feel-good emotions, okay? Uh, another aspect of what narcissists do to cash their victims is that they lie. They lie through their teeth, and they can look at you so sincerely, like they really mean it, and they really, really, really love you. But you know what? This person is lying, so be careful. Sometimes, these narcissists, when they don't get what they want, they start acting like a drama queen. Ah! Like a drama queen, you know what I mean? Drama queens are notorious for creating scenes, and they, they create havoc. So the narcissist is really good at temper tantrums. Uh, the narcissist also will play victim. He's all, he or she is always a victim. They're always the one who suffer more, more than you do, more than anybody does. They're, they're the world's greatest martyr. And so they'll go, oh, nobody loves me. Oh, you don't know how much uh, you, I have suffered for you. They'll try to guilt trip you on that. They'll, tar the, the, they'll, they'll turn in the tables around on you so that you feel uh, lousy, miserable, and full of guilt. And this is how they get you. They, they grab you. They, they either will be, uh, you know, the best uh, or they'll, you know, in terms of grandiosity, or they will either be the most one that suffers of all, the one who suffers the most. And so um, last that I want to leave you with is that the narcissist will conveniently Forget all his flaws, all his or her flaws. They'll conveniently, they won't remember any of their flaws or mistakes that they've committed against you. They just, all of a sudden, their mind goes, boop. And, but watch this. They will remember every single microscopic flaw in your life. And they'll remind you of that. Okay? So, I want you to see all the other videos I have on narcissism on my website or on YouTube. And uh, you'll find out more details on how these narcissists function and how you are becoming or are a victim in, in their uh, hypnotic spell. So I'm Dr. Sam, and my website is www.drsam, Dr. Sam without the period, dot TV. Thanks a lot for listening. Characteristics of narcissistic mothers, 1. Everything she does is deniable. There is always a facile excuse or an explanation. Cruelties are couched in loving terms. Aggressive and hostile acts are paraded as thoughtfulness. Selfish manipulations are presented as gifts. Criticism and slander is slyly disguised as concern. She only wants what is best for you. She only wants to help you. She rarely says right out that she thinks you're inadequate. Instead, any time that you tell her you've done something good, she counters with something your sibling did that was better or she simply ignores you or she hears you out without saying anything, then in a short time does something cruel to you so you understand not to get above yourself. She will carefully separate cause, your joy and your accomplishment, from effect, refusing to let you borrow the car to go to the awards ceremony, by enough time that someone who didn't live through her abuse would never believe the connection. Many of her put-downs are simply by comparison. She'll talk about how wonderful someone else is or what a wonderful job they did on something you've also done or how highly she thinks of them. The contrast is left up to you. She has let you know that you're no good without saying a word. She'll spoil your pleasure in something by simply congratulating you for it in an angry, envious voice that conveys how unhappy she is again, completely deniably. It is impossible to confront someone over their tone of voice, their demeanor or the way they look at you, but once your narcissistic mother has you trained, she can promise terrible punishment without a word. As a result, you're always afraid, always in the wrong, and can never exactly put your finger on why. Because her abusiveness is part of a lifelong campaign of control and because she is careful to rationalize her abuse, 
it is extremely difficult to explain to other people what is so bad about her. She's also careful about when and how she engages in her abuses. She's very secretive, a characteristic of almost all abusers, don't wash our dirty laundry in public. And will punish you for telling anyone else what she's done. The times and locations of her worst abuses are carefully chosen so that no one who might intervene will hear or see her bad behavior, and she will seem like a completely different person in public. She'll slam you to other people, but will always embed her devaluing nuggets of snide gossip in protestations of concern, love and understanding, I feel so sorry for poor Cynthia. She always seems to have such a hard time, but I just don't know what I can do for her. As a consequence the children of narcissists universally report that no one believes them, I have to tell you that she always talks about you in the most caring way. Unfortunately therapists, given the deniable actions of the narcissist and eager to defend a fellow parent, will often jump to the narcissist's defense as well, reinforcing your sense of isolation and helplessness. I'm sure she didn't mean it like that. Please stop! I'm scared! Please stop! No! <laughs> Narcissism, a personality disorder where you have abnormal desire for oneself, where you lack empathy, and unconscious inadequacy of self-esteem, due to regression of child development. Also a delusion that you are more important than everyone else. Narcissism, narcissistic people are not self-centered. There is a difference. Narcissism, N-A-R-C-I-S-S-I-S-M, -S -S Narcissism. <laughs> Well, I'm here. I'm talking about uniting today. You can unite in stopping the narcissist, whoever that may be in your life. A woman, a man, whoever that person is. How do we arm ourselves with information in application of this knowledge. How do we do this? I've had some thoughts. I want to go to those. Played a variety of clips to define what narcissism is. But how do we get beyond it? How do we get beyond it when they seem to have Hegemony had a hegemony over a certain group. Hegemony. H-E-G-E-M-O-N-Y in case you do not know. But why don't we go to a piece that I wrote a few days ago. 
and talk a little bit about it, shall we? I think we shall. Put some music on. All right. Wrote this a few days ago when some things came to my attention. And it's on how to survive a narcissist or how to avoid it, which I think is the best thing because they are a sick individual and unaware of that their actions are harming others. I think the best method is to do the avoidance method and reach out and intervene to those people that are unaware of what really is happening to them. So, are you a free spirit? A independent thinker? She who is a verified narcissist, or he who is a verified narcissist, has no use for the one she cannot control. For the sake of my peace, I'm going to use the word she and narcissist interchangeably. Narcissists hate free spirits. The individual the man or woman that is able to think critically a man or woman who is in touch with their created side basically anyone who is halfway capable of thinking and dreaming for themselves will be despised by the narcissist why it is because of the free-spirited person that they present an obstacle to the narcissist, an insatiable desire to control all people in her circle of relationships. She must be in control. The free spirit presents an obstacle to the narcissist, their insatiable desire, as I said before, to control anybody and everybody in her circle of relationships, quote unquote, friends of hers. Um, a so-called relationship that is no relationship at all. There is nothing mutual about this relationship. It is a form of slavery. It is master to servant, it is controller to controlee. It is not much different than a relationship between a farmer and an ox, a rancher and a horse, or a machinist with a press. They certainly will press you. You are a tool to the narcissist. It is foolishness to think otherwise. If you give the narcissist the control they desire, they will be more than happy to maintain a relationship with you. This means you have to compromise who you are. Traditionally in relationships, one does compromise, but not to this extent. When you have to compromise who you are. If you do not give the narcissist the control they desire expect to be the target of their rage or if you're lucky abandonment yes I say if you are lucky I say lucky most narcissists seek to destroy the ones they cannot control not very often will they do the abandonment method I personally discovered that most narcissists are more than happy to maintain a phony relationship if only you will provide a single pearl or two of your own soul, flesh, or finances that they can trample on. Like the swine Jesus warned us about in Luke chapter 7. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under your feet and turn again and rent you. I mean, I think that says it right there. You know, and you look for any holy book, you, you'll find information there. Again, Luke chapter 7, verse 6 says, 
Give not that which is holy unto the dogs or the narcissists. Neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under your feet and turn again and rent you. They will bite the hand that feeds them over and over till you have no hand left. Even if you decide to hand little parts of yourself to the narcissist in your life, even a pearl at a time, you will still eventually find the core of your soul trampled underfoot by the narcissist and the minions, the followers. But hey, even in the meantime, you can at least pretend you are enjoying a relationship with her, right? Are you pretending? Let me make this point clear to you. If the narcissist in your life cannot control you, you mean nothing to them. They do not love you, and they do not care for you. When you take the control away, you will find this, that they do not love you, and they do not care for you. When I say you, I mean the real you, the things about your personality, life, and spirit that define the true you, the things that make you who you are and what you are. The narcissist could care less for those things. Care for you does not exist in the hand in the heart of a narcissist. Narcissistic love is based on the level for which they can derive use from you. That's what love is for them. Like the farmer that loves his ox, the rancher loves his horse, or maybe instead of a machinist, someone that loves his new car. Most of the time, that use is a sensation of empowerment that she, the narcissist, experiences when they believe that they have exercised some sort of power over your person, be it your perceptions, your emotions, thoughts, or your behaviors. Sometimes that use is the enhancement of the narcissist's own image for the benefit for those that she's trying to impress. Maybe she's trying to impress a so-called audience on an internet radio show. Maybe they're trying to impress someone at the PTA, the company. When they think they're using you, it's a sensation of empowerment. It adds to them. Sometimes that use is the enhancements of the narcissist's own image for the benefit for those they are trying to impress. I think this is important. Much like a prop in a stage production, sometimes the usefulness that they can derive from you can be a simple kissing of the butt or cunning, conning you out of your whole life savings. There are a number of people that have experienced this with the narcissist. Either way, any relationship with a narcissist will always be built upon their ability to control and exploit some, if not all, aspects of your life. As a time to examine the relationship. Their so-called love for you extends to what use you are to them. Really take a look at the relationship you have with the narcissist in your life, female or male. I do believe in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3, when it says this, And through covetousness shall they be, with feigned words, make merchandise of you. Again, it says, And through covetousness shall they, with feigned words, make merchandise of you. Is someone making merchandise of you? Have they? How did that feel? I want you to remember how that felt or how it feels in this current time. When they misguide you, when they give you a set of expectations, but then because it's not important to them, those expectations are set aside for their own expectations. Your expe expectations, your values, what you care about are not important to the narcissist. 
false messengers of words come out of the mouth of the narcissist. If they cannot control and exploit you, you mean nothing to them. Here is a warning. Do not make the mistake of falling for the relationship card when you decide to cut ties with the narcissist in your life. If and when you muster the strength to sever ties with the narcissist, expect a full-fledged attack on your character and integrity. Let me repeat. Expect a full-fledged attack on your morality, character, and integrity when you sever ties with a narcissist. Much of this will be centered on your unwillingness to join yourself to the narcissist, to be the narcissist's cohort, supporter, because you will always be the supporter. They will not support you. And if they try to make it look like they're supporting you, that they're giving you a voice, it is only to make themselves look good. You will be the one accused of a calloused refusal of maintaining relations with someone so loving and kind as the narcissist in your life. All the feigned and fake acts of kindness will be heaped upon you by the narcissist, will be thrown back in your face by her as examples of your selfishness and your pettiness, as well as the narcissist's mercy and tenderheartedness. Don't think for one moment that the relationship card tactic will not be used on everyone in your circle of family and friends. They will reach out to them to get to you. They are going to hear about your bitter and unforgiven heart while the narcissist only wanted a relationship with me. Well, I just think we need to pray for poor Tom. He just doesn't know what he's doing. After all the things I did for him, look at what he did to me. Me, I'm a female. I think you hear my words. I hope you hear my words. The relationship card tactic. They did want a relationship with you. A one-way playing field. A one-way relationship. That one-way playing field is on their playing field. Alone. The narcissist way, of course, has to be that way or the highway. Get the fuck out, they may say to you. Maybe you should take their advice. And I apologize for cursing. But often a narcissist will fall prey to cursing and speaking in uh, defamatory ways. Now, in 1 Peter again, chapter 4, verse 4, it says they are astonished and think it very queer that you do not now run hand in hand with them in the same excesses of dispensation and they abuse you. If you are a free spirit, if you believe that God created you to be an individual personality or the power greater than you, universe, humanity, whatever you want to label you want to put on that. If you believe that you were created to be an individual personality with unique purposes in your life, if you are someone who has the capacity to think for yourself, if you are any of these things, and I believe you are, you need to stop wondering why the narcissist targeted you for shame, humiliation, and possibly even destruction. If you are fortunate, stop wondering why the narcissist discarded you like yesterday's rubbish. Celebrate! You are no longer the target. I will say you need to face up to the truth, painful as it is, all the time that you spent with this narcissist. And love and friendship to suddenly realize that it was not returned, it was never returned, and it was never going to be returned. That the narcissist has no use for the ones she cannot can control and exploit, and I do say exploit, for your maker. Well, I don't know if I wanna go here. 
But I will say this for a friend. I kind of wrote this for my friend. In Isaiah chapter 54, I think it was. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And the Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. You will be redeemed. The God of the whole earth, he is called. The Lord has called you like a woman forsaken, grieved in spirit and sorrow and heart sore. Even a wife wooed him one in youth, and she is later refused and scorned, or at worst, alone, says your God. So I had wanted to talk about narcissism to some extent in an educational format. I think I've done that. I think I've done that. And we've, as a community, have had a problem with a person that is a narcissist among us. When the abuser is one of us, what do we do? What do we do? We organize. We learn different ways of handling this narcissist. And I believe one way is to stonewall, is to leave it alone. When you see a cesspool of infection, you do not go into this cesspool or dumpster of, of infection and swim in it. No contact. Do not let it contaminate you. If you must, pray and meditate for this person from afar. Wish them well, for you have a good heart. You certainly do. I want to end this with a song by Tracy Chapman talking about a revolution. And remember who you are. That wonderful person that you are created to be is there. If you hurt, if you're hurt or hampered, remember that you are wonderful. You're not alone and you are loved. Now let's listen to this song and I will talk to you next time.
Remember, stay away from the narcissist. It is your best option. Where they are sick and know not what they do. Do you hear me? Shoot off your guns, your mouth. I love that. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Remember, stay away from the narcissist in your life, whoever that might be, for they are ill and know not what they do. Let's live our life authentically, support one another, and I'll see you in the halls of Spreaker. Good night. Good day.